It's a Sunday morning, week 48, and I'm just now sitting down for my week 47 check-in. Well, that's how it's going, and... What is happening, everybody? This is Dave Croft. Uh, welcome to my week 47 check-in for my 52 cues, where I am committing to writing at least one cue for the entire year and in coming into, uh, into YouTube and talking about it, talking about my experiences, things that are going on in the industry, in my life, and all of that. But if you can tell by the intro, um, I actually don't don't have a cue to show you this week. And I debated for quite a while on how to talk about this. Should I just muscle through it? Thinking that maybe I could kind of squeeze one in and, and kind of, you know, using smoke and mirrors, make it seem like I wrote it last week. But I just thought it was best just to come, come into the channel and talk to you and just be honest and transparent about how it goes sometimes. So, no, I don't have a cue to show for week 47 because I have very much overextended myself. It was a convergence of issues and um, I overcommitted and underdelivered, not only to my publishers, but to my best friend who I've known since sixth grade who came and we booked a trip for him to come into town and spend a week for me, uh, a week with me. And I had to take gigs and work. And so I just thought I would come and talk about it in typical vlogger type fashion. I guess this is my catharsis or counseling or therapy or whatever to come out and just tell you kind of what's what's going on. Like I said, I kind of went on pushed until Sunday. This is like the very last week, day of the week that I feel like I can get away with calling this still week 47. So there's no cue breakdown. And uh, if you want to, uh, to, to stop and just wait until the next, in the next few days, I have written some for this week, week 48 that I will be able to talk about. And, and, uh, I, I, I think I want to try to do two cues next week to kind of make up for it. But, I, I just wanted to share kind of what's what's going on. If you'll remember, several months ago, I talked about the process of stepping back from gigs, specifically theater gigs, because they take up so much time. And ha having that kind of epiphanal moment where maybe I'm not going to be a professional drummer and and uh, or that's not going to continue to be a part of my life. And that was all well and good until um, an opportunity came up, a theater run. I'm playing drums for Big at Garden Theater here in, in the Orlando area, at, specifically at uh, Winter Garden in Winter Garden, Florida, which is right outside Orlando. And it's a five-week run, 33 total services, meaning like we're with rehearsals and with show dates, but they are packed. They are really packed to the tune of having some doubles on Thursdays, meaning two shows in a row over Thanksgiving break, week 47, all for Thanksgiving. But I had a double on Friday, a double on Saturday, and then a double or, or a matinee on Sunday. I'm not, and I'm not complaining. I just found my week completely overwhelmed by this other commitment. And it's like, uh, if you look at project management, you know, think of it like, like, uh, marbles in a jar and, uh, or rocks in a jar. And so what you want to do is put the big rocks in the jar first, and then put the little rocks around the big rocks so that the big rock still takes up the most volume but the little rocks can all still kind of fit in your jar, your jar being the bandwidth that you have available to do whatever you're trying to do. For most of us, our day job is a pretty big rock. And for me, teaching at Full Sail, my, my quote unquote day job is a big rock, being a 
composer, specifically a production music composer, is another big rock. And I have, for the longest time, managed to keep those very solidly in the jar together. Put another big rock, your relationships, your family. I, th I think I think that that should be one of the biggest, if not the biggest rock. And so I've got these, these, these really big rocks all in my jar and taking a couple of other little rocks, some gigs here and there, fitting them around the big rocks that are already there. But then I took a giant big rock, 30, a five-week commitment, uh, I guess closer to six weeks when you think about the rehearsals leading up to the show. It's five weekend run, 33 total services over five weeks. And uh, by the way, I'm using the term services. It's not like church service. That's just kind of the, the term for like theater gigs. A service equals a rehearsal or a show or a dress or a preview or whatever. They just call them services. Well, I am providing my services. So this big rock came in and pushed itself into my jar. And see, the thing is, the thing that's super frustrating for me is I know this already. I, I already knew this about myself. I knew this back several months ago. I forget when I, when I did that entry, when I talked about stepping back from these types of commitments. And yet, when you get the call for a big chunky run and they're, they're able to pay out, you know, what will cover a mortgage payment for a month, that's, that's not nothing. Sprinkle on top of that, uh, Shannon, my wife, recently left her position as music director at her church. And so suddenly I'm like, okay, do I have the luxury, if you want to call it that, of turning down work, especially work that is right in front of you and payment that is right there versus production music, which takes months and months and months and months to pay out. And it's not that I, I, it's not that I felt like I couldn't say no. I wanted to make my wife leaving that situation, which I think was was healthy for her and everything, because things had gotten a little sideways, and so you know, just mm, let's just step back from that. And I wanted to enable her to have kind of a soft landing, and didn't feel like she had to immediately turn around and get a job somewhere else, you know, or go work retail or get an office job, which, which would be, you know, just for her would be being kind of cooped back up into a cube farm or something like that would be really, really gut-wrenching for her, soul-crushing, I dare say. And so I knew that I had the opportunity, the ability to give her that landing spot, to give her a safe place relatively free of any kind of financial pressure to immediately jump back into another job. This gig came along. And what's crazy is, here's what's crazy. And this is how I know the universe you know, has my back. Within 24 hours of her resigning from her position, I got three theater gigs, or I should say three calls for three different theater gigs, of which this big long run was one. And then two other ones that I had to turn down because I had taken the garden theater gig. So I feel confident in having taken it. Where I really, really kind of overcommitted was probably leading up into that. And like I said, my friend from middle school and high school, my best, longest, longest running friend that I've ever had in my life comes into town. He comes into town couple of times a year. Uh, his name is Saul Solomon. And so uh, we call it Salapalooza. So this was uh, our Salapalooza. And we had booked it and he had booked his flight months ago. And I called and told him, hey, man, this is, this is the thing that's happening. I really don't feel like I can turn it down because it, it's, it's helping Shannon out and all of that. But then other, other commitments came in. I got a call uh, for possible theme park music. I saw um, briefs come in for jazz drumming, which is why I have my drums set up. 
had a, a friend of mine and a colleague from Full Sail let me borrow his vintage Neumann uh, 184 pencil condensers. Vintage. They don't even make these anymore so that I could record uh, jazz drums. But I really haven't been able to, to do that. Last week, I had a bass player come over that I had booked and we tracked for a few hours that I paid you know, out of pocket. And I haven't been able to, to work with any of those. Okay, it's sounding like I'm starting to really complain and I'm really, really not. But I should have been better about boulder management, about rock management in my jar. And as soon as I got that gig, as soon as I got the garden theater gig, I should have been much more proactive. I should have gotten ahead. If, the, if I was talking to my students right now, I would be saying, hey, you knew this was coming. Why didn't you do your assignments ahead of time? I know this about myself, but I didn't. Instead, I kind of went along with my typical schedule. I didn't write cues extra. I didn't try to, try to, uh, to kind of preload the front end of my deliverables. Instead, I just kind of went, went along my, my normal pace. And then the big boulder crashes into my jar. And suddenly, writing, writing cues, cues that not only do I have, you know, to show you guys, I have to show my publishers. So what does all this have to do with anything? I'm not sure. It's just super rambly. And if you're still with me, thank you. I, I, I appreciate you. Uh, it's just about taking your own advice, listening to yourself. I, I didn't turn down the, the, the gig, even though past me would have said. I didn't feel like I necessarily had the luxury to turn that down. But I guess the moral of the story is when you see... When you see the tracks turning up ahead, you've got to prepare for that. I, I shouldn't have gone along with business as usual. I should have written ahead of time so that I didn't have to make apologies. I don't have to come out and, and do a YouTube video where I'm kind of owning the fact that I don't have a cue to show you guys. Thankfully, I was able to keep my live streams and everything going, but they've been at crazy times. Just ask my patrons. <laughs> Did a stream uh, yesterday, Saturday morning at 6 a.m., and then I had a 9 a.m. class, and then I, I worked a double, and then, you know, came home and, and was, was in bed by 11. Again, sounds like I'm complaining. I'm really, really not. I feel very, very blessed to have all of the opportunities that I do. But if anything, I want my tale to be a cautionary one to encourage you that when you see these big boulders coming at you, Indiana Jones style, is don't just keep walking. I mean, even Indiana Jones started running. <laughs> so I should, have, I should have gotten ahead with it. I should have gotten ahead of it, I think is, is what I need to do. Oh, and on top of all of that, while I'm complaining, I bricked my audio interface on uh, Wednesday morning. Turns out my Gen 1 Scarlet 18 i8 audio interface had a firmware update, and then I launched an old version of the software, and it bricked it. And it, it's old. It's probably about eight years old. It was a Gen 1. It was definitely kind of on its last leg, I guess. And I... I haven't really turned it off, which is is on me. It just stays stayed powered on. And so that was another big boulder chunked right into my jar. And so my Wednesday, where I was going to do a video and write a cue and, and bring it to you, that got eaten up. Okay. So again, if you're still with me, thank you very much. This has been very rambly. I'm not going to edit it. I'm just going to put it out there and hope that it helps somebody out there dealing with these same things. But I wanted to come out. I wanted to own it. I wanted to talk about my process because that's what this vlog is all about. There are going to be times when big boulders are coming at you. And if you have the opportunity, try to get ahead of them and don't just wait for things to go sideways and then, I guess, make, make apologies, I guess. Um, 
people that uh, that I want to thank are my Patreon patrons whose support helps keep this channel going. Their uh, their contributions uh, are, are very much appreciated and gives me uh, motivation, energy to keep going. We have been able to keep the live streams going because one of the benefits of being a Patreon patron is you get access to my weekly music production live streams. Yesterday, we were working on a Gypsy Jazz cue, and I recorded melodica and... Um, and ukulele layers. And so that, that was a lot of fun. There is uh, information about my Patreon at, at, in the, in the description below. But if, uh, even if you don't ever want to contribute and you just want to come to the channel and receive, that's completely okay too. But guys, that's going to do it, do it for me for week 47. Let's see what week 48 has to offer. And, uh, maybe, maybe I'll come at you with two cues, but I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, until next time, peace.